Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Several days ago, I was having a chat with Jason Hill before he went off on his trip to Italy. And we were talking about Aptera, obviously, and he was telling me that everything is going very well. And the conversation kind of went into the Model 2 and the Bolt and cheaper electric cars from China. And I was telling him that I thought that if a really low cost EV came on the market, that would be probably really bad for Aptera. And the question he asked me was, do you think that we are um, pursuing a red ocean or blue ocean strategy? Which, to which I responded, I have no idea what you're talking about. And then he kind of briefly told me what those were. And that led me down a little rabbit hole. And it is actually in reference to this book um, and this idea that uh, Dr. Kim and Dr. Marbone have. And it's called Blue Ocean Strategy. And so I, I perused this book and read most of it over the last several days. It's very interesting. And so I thought I'd um, talk to you guys because it seems that um, that Aptera is perhaps pursuing what's called a Blue Ocean Strategy. And in order to understand this well, we need to do a little bit of background and talk about um, um, management theory and the idea of competitiveness and this it, the kind of the great grandfather of all these uh, ideas is michael porter's generic strategy so this is uh this is a little grid talking about porter's generic strategy and this is michael porter um i, I had no idea who he was but when i kind of went down this rabbit hole i found out about him this is a very uh, important guy in management theory and he's probably one of the most influential guys in um thinking about strategy and competitive uh, theories. He is a professor at Harvard Business School and he started this Institute for Strategy and Competitiveness. Anyways, he came up with a lot of theories about competition and how companies should think about it and how they should focus their strategies. And what he came up with, it, one of his theories is this called Porter's Genetic Strategies. And it comes like, it goes like this. Either you can pursue a strategy of cost leadership. That means you give something uh, in the broad market, like whatever, like, for example, since we're talking about Aptera, like cars, your your car company, and you decide that you're going to offer pretty much the same thing that everyone else offers, but at a lower cost. So you're increasing value to the customer. And so that is one way. Um, and then you can dominate the market because you are the cost leader in that, in that um, market segment. The other way you can do is you can do a differentiation strategy, which means that instead of pursuing a lower cost, you pursue something that um, that people are very interested in. Uh, that makes it like, for example, you make a really, really fast car and people that are interested in that, or you make a very, very safe car, or you make a very, very luxurious car, one of these things, and you differentiate that. And then you can, you don't have to compete on cost. You can compete on the thing that you offer that is better than your competitors. Uh, and then you can do this within um, market segments too. Like you can say that I will make the cheapest um, sports car. And so if you will kind of lock down uh, that segment of that small segment of the market. Anyways, his idea is was that companies should produce, pursue one strategy and pursue it and focus on that. Because if you kind of try to pursue multiple strategies, you'll kind of end up in the middle and you'll end up kind of jack of all trades, master of none, and that's not a good place to be. And so this is the way that um, competitive theory in management worked for many years. And so the idea is, is we are working in a competitive market and you must outcompete your um, the other companies in your market segment um, to get your slice of the pie. This red ocean, blue ocean strategy is something slightly different. And so what they're saying is, is that, that that way of thinking is what they're calling the red ocean strategy. And for a little background, these these are the two guys. This is Dr. Chan Kim and Dr. Renee Mauborn. I, I'm probably butchering her name. But anyway, these two guys were um, researchers at University of Michigan Business School in Ann Arbor. And then they came up with this idea. They published several books and articles and then eventually they they published this book the blue ocean strategy book and they they are now um directors 
at uh, INSEAD Blue Ocean Strategy Institute in France. And that, that's where they're at. And th this is a very influential book that has sold over 4 million copies. Okay, so going back to the strategy. So the Red Ocean Strategy is, the, is what we generally think of. That's traditional uh, management theory. And they say that you compete in an existing market space. And then you beat the competition, you exploit existing demand, and then you make value cost trade-offs, and then you align the whole systems with the strategy. You, you try to pursue a choice of differentiation or low cost, which is going back to Porter's generic strategies. So this is kind of a zero-sum game. There's a certain amount of pie, uh, and then you are trying to capture as much of the pie as possible. Or you try to capture a small segment of the pie, but but maximize profits within that strategy. And what they found out when Michael Porter was doing um, his research, he found out that there were two kinds of companies that were profitable. There are the companies that are very large and basically um, have large pieces of the pie and that they usually did that through a cost leadership strategy. And then there were small companies that exploited segments of the market that were very profitable. But kind of middle of the road companies that were not very big, big enough to compete on cost and not small enough to compete on differentiation. They did the worst. They were the least profitable companies. So he thought that you had to um, choose one or the other. So the blue ocean strategy is don't compete in the market space that exists. You create a new market, you create new demand, and then you, ha you have an uncontested market space. So competitors at that point are irrelevant because you've created your own market space and you are you are the only player in that market space basically until other people move in obviously um so beat the competition so you make the competition irrelevant because you've created a whole nother market um create and capture new demand so you're not after the pie that exists you're going to create a new pie and then break the co value cost trade-off that's uh, something they talk about in their book and then align the whole system in pursuit of differentiation and low cost. This is the this is they're saying that you can pursue both at the same time um, if you're in an uncontested space. This kind of reminded me of a quote by Steve Jobs. Um, he said uh, one of his famous quotes was: "Some people say give the customer what they want, but that's not my approach. My job is to figure out what they're going to want before they do." I think Henry Ford once said, "If I asked customers what do they want, they would have told me." A faster horse. People don't know what they want until you show it to them. That's why I never rely on market research. Our task is to read things that are not yet on the page. So that is basically, um, if we want to use their uh, wording, that would be a blue ocean strategy. Steve Jobs is saying, I'm not going to look at what market is out there right now and try to compete in it. I'm going to create a new market and um, create stuff that people don't even know that they want yet. And when they see it, they know that they want it. Um, so let's let's talk about some examples. So they have several examples here, and they're talking about Marvel. And probably the, the two things I knew about this is I've heard of Marvel, Nintendo. I sort of heard about Stitch Fitch. I don't know what about these. And of course, we all know what Cirque du Soleil is. So Marvel, they were saying that Marvel was um, a comic book business, um, and they were near bankruptcy. And they could have competed in the comic book market, you know, trying to outcompete the other comic book makers like DC Comics, um, Vision Comics, you know, other comic book uh, companies. And but there was only a small segment. But they decided to do what they would consider a blue mark ocean strategy, and um, and take their comic book IP and turn it into movies and television. Uh, so they they left the comic book market segment, so they left that pie, and they started a whole new pie of basically like integrated superhero uh, universe movies where like multiple superheroes. So instead of like the regular superhero movies like Batman, Superman, they were gonna make like an integrated universe of superhero movies and link them together. And they've been wildly successful and um, they sold, you know, they got they sold themselves off to um, to Disney for several billion dollars. Uh, so that was and this is their kind of um, strategy. 
they call it the ERRC grid. So what you do is you eliminate the things in the that in the mark in the mark the traditional market that are not useful, and then you increase the things that are useful, and then you reduce the things that are less useful, and you create things that are useful. So get rid of these things and create and or raise or make new of these things. So uh, you can see what their grid for Marvel was. And kind of the same thing for Cirque du Soleil. They're saying Cirque du Soleil. Um, in, you know, before circuses were like kind of um, cheaper entertainment geared more toward children. And um, they wanted to create a new market, which is where people are willing to pay more and create a circus that's more for adults and um, concentrate on like human performance and performance art things rather than like animals and that kind of stuff. Um, and they've, you know, they've been wildly successful in that. And of course, once they did this, other companies move into that market. You know, obviously like DC saw what Marvel was doing and DC was trying to um, kind of create the same thing and create a DC cinematic universe. And then there's other um there's a lot of other companies kind of moving into Cirque du Soleil type stuff. If you go to Vegas, there's lots of other shows like that. So once you create it, um, other people will come. But the reason they call this Red Ocean is that they're saying that once the the market is saturated, it's your success only comes at the cost of someone else's failure. So you gain market share at the cost of someone else losing the market share. So it's a very competitive kind of dog eat dog um, world and there's like just blood in the water so it becomes red ocean blue ocean they call it that because a blue ocean is empty and limitless and it's deep and you can there's a lot of opportunity out there and there's no there's very little competition so it seems like perhaps aptera is pursuing this blue market strategy and they are saying that what they're creating is something that's different than everything else and you can arguably say that that is true and if you create something that's different that people really connect with and really want, then um, price, it's, I wouldn't say that price is irrelevant, but price is less important. Um, of course, the people that are interested in something purely for the price, they're going to not be part of this uh, strategy. Uh, but I think that that is what they're thinking is that they're creating Aptera, which is a product that is different and is, is a whole nother market than um, traditional vehicles. So I hope that this strategy works out with them. I thought it was very interesting. Um, thanks, Jason, for pointing this out to me. It was fascinating for me to look into, and the book was very interesting. Um, and uh, it's, it's a little bit of a peek into the management and strategy mindset of um, Aptera. So I thought it was quite interesting. All right, tell me what you guys think um, in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everyone.